have decided uh, no, uh, to start the lecture na lang because we are still waiting for the vaccine. Uh, it's our uh, poster vaccination here in EVRMC. And then the vaccine is still uh, to be prepared. So I have decided because we have a, 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 a relatively long lecture now. Uh, I will uh, finish up the two topics this, this uh, morning so we can have the examination on uh, Wednesday. Pero uh, I'll be uh, later kung ako na time para ma-injikan uh, we will have a break. Is it okay now? No. Just for the dog. Okay, thank you. So, uh, last time we discussed about uh, the introductory part in my, uh, mycology. And then I also uh, discussed the cutaneous um, mycosis. So, this time we will be dealing here with uh, fungal infections that are caused by uh, fungi and then uh, these are the infections that are uh, located in the subcutaneous uh, tissues as well as those uh, fungi that cause systemic uh, mycosis. So to start with, we have the following uh, this, uh, fungal diseases that uh, affect the subcutaneous layer of your body. So we have the first one is uh, sporotrichosis. This is described as a chronic infection of the cutaneous and subcutaneous tissues and the lymphatics. So the identified causative agent for this, uh, for this um, fungal infection is is poroptrix shinti. And one can have this infection through traumatic inoculation in the skin. However, the infection is, only, is not only limited in the subcutaneous uh, late, uh, layer of your body, but it may have the tendency to uh, spread to lymphatics, lymph nodes, muscle, and bones. And other organs may also be involved, like your lungs, CNS, and the GUT. Okay? So this is the morphological characteristics of Sporopteryx shinki. So when the organism is cultured in suburbs, this uh, dextrose agar at room temperature, um, between three to five days, it produces the blackish to and shiny, but become fuzzy with age columnies. So please take a look on the on the uh, illustration uh, on the monitor. So this is described as a dimorphic fungi, in which the yeast form can also be isolated at. 35 to 37 degrees centigrade using the brain part infusion agar. Okay, so this is the uh, microscopic appearance of sporotrix shinti. Okay, so what are the determinants of pathogenicity of sporotrix shinti in causing the disease? So it was described to be uh, sensitive to temperature, so that uh, this is also one reason by which the organism favors to uh, look to be located in the subcutaneous tissues. Most strains grow at 38 degrees centigrade, and the possible mechanism for tissue tropism or specificity and its toxicity is related on the production of the enzyme neuroginidates. Okay, so with regards to the clinical manifestations of sporotrichosis, this affects all persons and ages 
However, the, there is a uh, gen ano, sex uh, predominance wherein it is uh, it is observed to affect 75% of males because of the so-called uh, sex link uh, susceptibility. And of course, uh, the increased exposure of the main uh, male gender in, in having the infections. But there are also identified factors uh, for one to develop sporotrichosis. These include um, nutrition, alcohol, then gender, and low cell-mediated immunity. Okay, so there are clinical uh, forms of sporotrichosis. We have the lymphocutaneous sporotrichosis, which comprise the most com ano, common type of the uh, disease entity, wherein it affects 75% of the cases. And this is caused by traumatic inoculation on the skin. And the, with the entry of the fungal organism in the subcutaneous tissues, it will involve now uh, skin nodules uh, formation as manifested on the illustration on the screen. Okay, the second type of sporotrichosis is the chronic one. So this also involves nodules uh, development and the initial uh, lesion is said to be more exudative but less gomatous. And there is again the tendency to become chronic but may heal spontaneously. So again, it is classed on the monitor, an example of chronic sporotrichosis. Then uh, the third type is the so-called fixed uh, sporotrichosis. This refers to the presence of only one lesion. So the infection is said to be restrictive, uh, rest, uh, restrictive but less progressive. So the lesion is ulcerative and may appear as flat or rash. So this is associated in endemic areas, the fixed sporotrichosis. So aside from the uh, no, acute, chronic, and fixed, we have other forms of uh, sporotrichosis affecting other tissues of our body, usually the mucocutaneous areas of uh, like your eyes. It may also involve your bones, which is the most common site for dissemination from skin lesions and in the meninges of your uh, brain, which is said to be the most common site affected when the lesions now become metastatic. Okay, so these are the other forms of sporotrichosis. Okay, how do one diagnose sporotrichosis? First, you can do your microscopic examination through histopathology. So basically, the lesion resembles epithelioma. So one can use a uh, stain. So we have the pus or the periodic acid uh, shift stain and the methemalamine uh, silver stain. Okay. Then, of course, if you're dealing here with infections, the gold standard for the laboratory diagnosis is, of course, the culture. So you culture at room temperature and then you use uh, specific uh, labor, uh, no, uh, culture media like your Sabadraud's dextrose agar incorporated with a specific antibacterial uh, antibiotics. This is for the purpose of inhibiting the growth of uh, bacteria. Then we have also the inhibitory mode agar. 
So what are these the, the different uh, specimens submitted for culture? You can use aspirated fluid, and then you can also use pus, exudative material, and biopsy tissues. Okay. For rapid diagnosis, you can try do uh, doing your cellular, uh, serology test. However, it is um, help only for early infection. So um, the for uh, one serological test to be of diagnostic value, you need one is to eighty titer to show significant reaction. When you say significant reaction, to consider the test as positive. So a titer of one is to eighty. Okay. So how do you treat sporotrichosis? So for lymph uh, cutaneous and fixed sporotrichosis, um, this, this is said to be non-debilitating -debil uh, disease. So one can, um, um, the, the disease entity may not uh, require uh, treatment. However, uh, please, uh, please also remember that the lesions are said uh, characterized to be chronic and may persist even without treatment for years. For cutaneous sporotrichosis, the treatment of choice is the use of potassium iodide. You can also try other antifungal agents like your dihydrosteel uh, steel bamidin, grisopolvin, and 5 chlorocytosine Okay, so that is for sporotrichosis. The next fungal um, infection is chromomycosis or phayo uh, hip uh, hypomycosis. So chrom uh, chromomycosis and phayo hypomycosis. So the pathology behind these two disease uh, entities is caused by traumatic implantation of uh, dermatitious uh, fungus uh, into the subcutaneous uh, tissue. What are the possible causative agents for these uh, fungal infections? We have the Ponsicia. Pedrosi, which is the most common uh, fungal organism isolated. Then we have Ponsicae uh, compacta, then uh, Phyalophora verrucosa, and Cladosporium carion. So the natural reservoir of the infection are the um, soil and plant debris. So that is your chromomycosis. Uh, so, uh, characteristics to this fungal infection is it has low level of virulence and it is uh, described as a localized infection in the exposed lower extremities. And systemic inv uh, invasion is relatively rare. So, uh, so your right of your monitor, this is an example of the lesion cause um, that is uh, diagnosed to be chromomycosis. Okay, so what about uh, phayohypomycosis? So this refers to all infections characterized by the presence of darkly pigmented septate hyphae in tissue, both the cutaneous and systemic mycosis. So there are clinical forms of phayohypomycosis. Uh, uh, we have the enca uh, encapsulated cyst, brain abscess, and mycetoma. Okay, so how do you diagnose uh, the infection, fungal infection in the laboratory? 
you can do your potassium hydroxide preparation. So the potassium hydroxide uh, preparation or your KOH, just uh, a, a simple uh, wet mount. So you need the skin scraping and then uh, add your potassium hydroxide and then you uh, uh, examine it under the microscope. You can also do your tissue biopsy and, of course, do culture using, again, fungal-specific culture media like your uh, Saborod's dextrose agar and Loeffler's serum agar. Okay, so the, uh, from the uh, illustration, you can have the tissue biopsy result and then the B figure shows the colonial morphology of uh, the organism and uh, figure C represents the microscopic appearance of the organism. Okay, so how do you treat the infection? So an anti uh, antibacterial agents are usually uh, recommended if you are dealing here with complicated lesions you can also do surgical uh, drainage. Then the use of topical agents like fluocytosine. And then uh, if you're dealing here with uh, brain uh, abscesses caused by the infection, uh, by the fungal uh, organism, uh, it is warranted to do brain surgery. And then uh, the, with surgical uh, management, this is coupled here with uh, the use of antifungal agents like amphotericin B, flucytosin, uh, meconazole, and ketonazole. Okay, next is mycetoma or the other terms uh, include madura food or maduromycosis. So this is described as a chronic subcutaneous infection induced by traumatic inoculation with any saprophytic fungal organisms. So basically, there is no spe specific organism, fungal organism that is uh, that can be uh, pointed as the cause of this mycetoma. So uh, mycetoma is not only uh, is not exclusively co uh, caused by fungal organisms, but bacteria as well. So we have this uh, differential um, or uh, agents that may cause uh, mycetoma. Okay. So what are the most commonly affected body parts? in mycetoma. So this include your feet or the lower extreme, uh, extremities. So as exemplified in the illustration, in the, no, um, uh, the uh, as exemplified in the picture uh, on your right side of your monitor. And then hands and the then also expose skin. So uh, pathology-wise, this uh, mycetoma is characterized by suppuration and abscess formation. There is also granulomata and uh, formation of draining sinuses containing granules or micro colonies of the fungi. It is said to be chron uh, chronic in nature and the risk for dissemination is said to be minimal. Okay, so how do you diagnose and as well as treat the mycetoma? So this involves demonstration of the granule, the text, uh, color texture, the size and presence of um, hyaline or pigmented hyphae that um, will uh, help us determine the specific etiology. 
So treatment um, is said said to be difficult, but you can try the following antifungal agents, and this include amphotericin B. You can use also topical mistatine, potassium iodine, clocytosine, and then surgery may be warranted in protracted cases that are said to be unresponsive to medical conservative management. Okay. Next, we have rhinos, uh, rhinosporidiosis. So this is a chronic infection characterized by the development of poly, polypoid vasness of in the mucal, uh, uh, in the nasal, sorry, nasal mucosa. And the causative agent for this, the fungal agent, this uh, rhinos for uh, rhinos for uh, is caused by um, phenosporidium severi. So this is a solenoid disease that are common in horses, cattle, and dogs. So. This infection is said to be common in children and young, young adults. And it was being uh, found out that most um, males are, are commonly infected, comprising about 90% of the cases. So in figure A, it will show to us the the gross vision affecting the nose fields. And then figure B will tell us the uh, histopath uh, result of the mass. Okay. So the lesions are most common in the mucosa of the nose, nasopharynx, and soft pala. Okay. And then the mucocutaneous tissues are also uh, affected, uh, involving your conjunctiva, the skin, the larynx, genitalia, or even the rectum. Okay. For the la uh, diagnosis and treatment of the Fungal infection in, uh, usually include histologic examinations and for rapid diagnosis, you can try serological tests. Treatment includes surgery and the use of topical agents. Topical agents and uh, local injection with ethyl steel beam meeting. Okay, the next is lobomycosis. So this is a chronic subcutaneous infection in humans and the, uh, the lesion is called lobomycosis because of the causative agent loboa lobe boy. So this, uh, the clinical manifestations of this fungal infection include the uh, appearance or formation of hard nodule in the extremities, face, and ear. So the laboratory diagnosis include direct microscopic exam of uh, skin uh, scrapings, biopsies, wet mount of the lesions. And then uh, treatment, Treatment in, uh, include the use of uh, sulfa drugs and, of course, if there is a need to do surgery, uh, um, surgical excision. Okay, so these are examples of how lobomycosis look like. So figures A and B is that's the gross appearance of the of the lesion, whereas 
figure C is the uh, histopathic result. Next, we have rhino in uh, in tom. Amo na lewat ni makori niya nga ba rhino in tomo moth to mycosis. So you need really to pronounce this and verbalize the term so you can be used to this rhino in tomo to mycosis. So this is said to be a rare infection of the nasal mucosa, and this is caused specifically by conidiobolus coronatus. So this involved culture of the organism in saburoids uh, dextrose agar, and when uh, cultured in this uh, culture medium, you can see fast growing colorless to yellowish colonies and clinically it presents as uh, nodule formation. Oh, okay. Um, pwede mag-break ah, nagkita kay ako na kuno sunod. Okay la. Sorry na, sorry. Dire man lang maiha kay ko an man ni Pfizer. So dapat kasi add to pagod uh, dayon. Okay? So I'll continue the lecture once maka-receive dayon na ko tapon vaccine. Okay? So you can press your break. Hello. Ada pa kamo? Ayado. Yes. Hi. No. Amo nga oi. Amo marisyo no doktor kita tapos na dok kita dagong gihapo. Ah. Pos na. Ya nagahan. Yan ay hapin nag-ahanggit akong slide. Okay. Okay. So, going back to our subcutaneous mycosis, the next is subcutaneous uh, phycomycosis. This is a chronic condition, but said to be self-limiting. So the fungal agent responsible for this um, infection is Basidio bolus haptosporus. So the infection is most prevalent in Africa, especially among children affecting usually more males. So the lesions start as a nodule in the torso or in the limb. So laboratory diagnosis involves culture again in SDA or subarouts, the uh, dextrose agar without cyclohexamide. So treatment is with the use of potassium iodide and the prognosis is said to be good. Okay, do you have any questions with regards to the, to the uh, subcutaneous mycosis? The next topic involved uh, the discussion of uh, fungal inf uh, infections which may involve the systemic um, so meaning there is a um, involvement of organs. Um, okay, so we have the systemic mycosis. 
first is first is uh, coccidioidomycosis. This uh, the, this is caused by coccidioides initis, and one can have the infection through inhalation of arthroponidia. So, the, with regards to the clinical pathology of the lesion, this may present as a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. So, half of the cases are described to be benign, symptomatic, but self-limiting. So, what are the predisposing factors for one to develop the disseminated uh, coccidioide? Do mycosis. So one is uh, the range. So this is said to be common in among blacks, in Filipinos, La Latin Americans, and Indians. Okay. So with regards to coccidiodomycosis, there are clinical forms. The first one is primary coccidiodomycosis. This follows inhalation of the arthroponidia except for cutaneous inoculation. So most of the cases are said to be, again, asymptomatic. However, if the patient is um, symptomatic, the clinical signs include fever production, chest pain, calf, weight loss. So diagnostic. Uh, the x-ray will show uh, discrete nodules in the lower uh, lobes of the lungs. Other uh, signs and uh, symptoms include allergic reactions, usually erythema nodosum or multiform. So for the primary coccidiodomycosis, it is said to be a good uh, prognosis. The second one, uh, the second clinical form is the disseminated uh, coccidiodomycosis. So usually this develops within a month, a few months as a complication of the primary infection. So we have the, the under this disseminated, we have clinical types, we have the chronic and uh, progressive pulmonary disease, then single or multiple extra pulmonary dissemination, which include now involvement of the uh, meninges of the brain, skin, or bones. And then the third type of disseminated coccidiodomycosis is the generalized uh, type. So in the illustration, in the figure, um, especially the, the figure, the, um, in the lower portion, uh, it shows the involvement of the spine. Okay, so how do you uh, diagnose coccidioidis uh, imitis in the laboratory? So uh, please take note that the fungal or the organism is said to be dimorphic and uh, the definitive uh, diag for definitive uh, diagnosis, this requires demonstration of granules in sputum, in uh, draining sinuses, or tissue specimens. Uh, you can uh, do this, uh, the demonstration of these granules, through uh, potassium hydroxide mold. You can also do culture using SDA supplemented with 4% glucose and the use of inhibitory mold agars. You can also do uh, for preliminary diagnosis using uh, some serological tests like a complement fixation test, the tube precipitin test, and immunodiffusion test. Okay, so this figure will show to us the, the on your 
leftmost part is the uh, surface growth of the organism showing the colonial morphology. Then in the middle, uh, it will show to us the uh, microscopic uh, morphology of the organism. And the rightmost uh, figure shows the uh, histopath. Okay, so for the infection, um, for treatment, uh, you, it requires simple, uh, symptomatic treatment. So meaning, um, based on the simple, uh, symptomatology presented by the patient, you uh, just give uh, no, uh, medications according to how the, present, the patient present himself. So you can also use uh, antifungal agents for uh, severe primary infection with dissemination using amphotericin B. Then antifungal agents, meconazole, and also for coccidial meningitis, you can use uh, intrafectal chemotherapy. And then also you can try the use of ketoconazole. Next, uh, systemic fungal infection is histoplasmosis. So this is the most common pulmonary mycosis of humans. And the culprit uh, agent for this is histoplasma capsulatum, which is also uh, characterized to be a dimorphic fungi. So the infection is initiated primarily through inhalation. But uh, other modes of transmission can also be possible through using uh, factors like that. Okay, so we'll now go to the clinical manifestation of histoplasmosis. So we have the so-called acute pulmonary histoplasmosis this presents as a flu-like illness developing to moderate to severe disease. So the degree of involvement and symptom, uh, symptomatology is related to the size of the inoculum inhaled. So it requires an incubation period of about one to several, uh, several weeks. And the, usually the, press, uh, the patient presents with fever, night sweats, dysna, hoarseness of uh, voice, and weight loss. So the figure will tell us the X-ray result of patients having acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. The second clinical uh, type is chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis. Most uh, uh, the, the gender that is most commonly affected are the adult men. So the signs and symptoms uh, presented by the patient may be indistinguishable from chronic cavitary TB. So this uh, will tell us that the chronic pulmonary uh, histoplasmosis can be confused with that of TB. So the uh, uh, clinical manifestations include fever, productive cough, progressive weakness, and fatigue. Okay. The third clinical form of histoplasmosis is the disseminated one. So we have the disseminated histoplasmosis. So after the lungs, the most commonly affected are the reticuloendothelial uh, tissues of the spleen, liver, lymph nodes, and bone marrows. It may be benign and inapparent infection, and in some cases, it may be acute and progressive. So signs and symptoms include enlargement of the spleen and as well as the liver, there could also be weight loss, anemia, and leukopenia. Then another clinical form 
is uh, primary cutaneous histoplasmosis, but uh, this occur rarely, and one can have the infection through contamination of the traumatic wound. So for histoplasmosis, the laboratory diagnosis include the following. You can do your fungal smear using the following specimens. Sputum, tissues from biopsy, spinal fluid, or even blood. So uh, aside from having the smear, you can do culture using the following specimens. Uh, sputum, bronchial washings, and then you can use the several dext uh, dextrose agar supplemented with cyclohexamide, chloramphenicol, or gentamicin. So um, this uh, you should be careful in uh, in when you do your culture. Usually for culture of uh, for culture of fungal organism, we require only two weeks. But here, if you are dealing here with histoplasma capsulatum, the incubation uh, required is four weeks at a temperature between 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. Okay, so this is how histoplasma capsulatum looks like on culture. So the figure on your left, so describing the the uh, colonial morphor, uh, morph morphology, and then on the right side is the microscopic appearance of histoplasma capsulatum. You can also do serological tests. Uh, using complement fixation te test and immunodiffusion test. For treatment, most cases re uh, remain undetected and require no treatment. So the treatment of choice for full-blown uh, full infection is amphotericin B. Surgery may also be warranted in some cases. Okay, next is blastomycosis. This is described as a chronic infection characterized by granulomatous and suppurative lesions initiated by inhalation. So the causative agent is blastomyces dermatid uh, dermatitis. So the primary organ that is involved are the lungs. But there might be the tendency of the of the infection to be disseminated to other organs. Okay, so there are two clinical forms of blastomycosis. We have the pulmonary and the chronic cutaneous blastomycosis. So the first one involving the lungs, the second one, the chronic type involving your skin. So for Pulmonary blastomycosis, it may be asymptomatic or present as an acute or subacute pneumonia. So it persists locally in the lungs but may spread to uh, uh, any organ. So the lesions rarely cascade or ca uh, calcify. It may be disseminated through the lymphatic or blood circulation. So the most common forms of lung involvement involves infiltration, cavitation, pneumonia, or formation of nodules. Okay, then we have the chronic cutaneous blastomycosis. So the initial lesions are um, described as one or more subcutaneous nodules that ulcerate. So the lesions are common on the exposed skin surfaces such as the face, the hands, wrist, and lower leg. 
And there is also the tendency for the lesion to expand into the trunks. Then we have the disseminated blastomycosis. This is an expansion of the pulmonary blastomycosis. This involves the skin, the bones, the GUT, the central nervous system, and spleen. Less commonly affected are the liver, lymph nodes, heart, and the visceral organs. Okay, so for the diagnosis, you can do your KOH or potassium hydroxide preparation using PAS, uh, exudates, uh, and sputum as the specimen. Then you can also do culture using S, uh, SDA, inhibitory mode agar, or the sheep blood enrich uh, medium. And also, uh, you can use serology for rapid diagnosis using tests uh, involving the use of complement fixation tests. Okay, so this is how blastomyces dermatitis looks like on culture. So that's the surface growth. And then on the right side of the figure is the microscopic morphology as you view this in the microscope showing hyphal uh, elements with uh, micro uh, macro conidia. okay so for treatment you can do uh, use aromatic diamidine amphotericin b and ketoconazole Okay, next is paracoxidoidomycosis. This is described as a chronic granulomatous disease that begins as a primary pulmonary in apparent, in apparent uh, infection that disseminates to produce ulcerative granulomata in the mucosal surfaces of the nose, mouth, or GIT. So the figure here will show to us involvement of the oral cavity. So the causative agent for this infection is paracoxidoides brasiliensis. So this is also a dimorphic fungal uh, agent. So we have clinical forms. We have the asymptomatic infection, which is responsible for the initial uh, establishment of the infection in humans. And then the second one is the latent or residual form. Then the second group are the symptomatic disease. Um, this include the juvenile type and the adult type. So uh, the job, uh, juvenile type is described as either acute or subacute and progressive form. Uh, for the adult type, we have the chronic progressive form, which may involve pulmonary or the disseminated uh, infection. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis for this in, uh, fungal infection includes microscopic examination using the following specimens. So we have sputum tissue or uh, scrapings from the mucocutaneous lesions. You can also do culture using uh, SDA or subodromous dextrose agar incorporated with antibiotics as inhibitors for, uh, for bacterial organisms and then brain heart inf uh, infusions. Then we have the <coughs> serological test, like immunodiffusion test and complement fixation test. Okay, so this is how your paracoxidoides brasilian, uh, brasiliensis look like. 
So the figure A show to us the the colonial morphology upon culture. Then figure B and the figure on the right will show to us the uh, microscopic appearance of uh, Paracoxoidoides brasiliensis. Okay, so for treatment, this involved the use of ketoconazole, labeled as the drug of choice in the treatment of the infection, but you can also uh, try amphotericin B and sofa drugs. So for one to consider that uh, there is success in the treatment, it requires about two years to treat the patient. Okay, the last group of uh, infections are the so-called opportunistic mycosis. Opportunistic mycosis. So these are fungal infections which, uh, which are relatively uh, non, uh, that is relatively benign, but when the, the immunity of the host is compromised, then it becomes pathologic. Okay? One is candidiasis. So, uh, of course, you know it already that the causative agent is candida al uh, albicans. So, candida albicans grow in civil, uh, several different morphological forms. And uh, it is described as unicellular, uh, oval shaped uh, fungus, and it, it lives as a harmless commensals in the gastrointestinal and gen, uh, genital urinary tracts and are found in over 70% of the population. So, meaning the candid, uh, candida albicans may be. Um, uh, non-pathologic in some cases. But the organism is said to be uh, dangerous when there is already overgrowth of the organism. Okay, so this is your candida albicans. So your left is the schematic representation of the uh, my uh, microscopic uh, morphology. And then on to your right uh, are the different uh, organ systems in your body that are so, so susceptible, susceptible for candidiasis uh, to develop. Okay. So this slide will just show to us how varied is the varied is the presentation of candidiasis. So you can have many symptoms observed in the patient. So from from uh, nausea to formation of uh, low grade fever, even and you know, development of uh, food allergies. So, varied with the presentation for candidiasis. Okay? So, what are the predisposing factors for one to develop candidiasis? So, uh, in, uh, immunocompromised uh, state. So, diba? Uh, I mentioned it earlier that the the organism is just opportunistic, but when there is compromise already in the immune system of the patient, then it can cause disease. For uh, also other predisposing factors include prolonged use of antibiotics, anti-cancer drugs, and anti-inflammatory drugs. The, another predisposing factor is having low birth weight neonates, and for those undergoing therapeutic procedures like organ transplantation, open heart surgery, and then artificial heart bulbs in dwelling, have those having 
indwelling catheters are susceptible for the development of candidiasis and also in burn patients. Okay, so the uh, no, candidiasis is classified into cutaneous and systemic. So, ko pa, um, there are many, for systemic, there are many um, organs that are affected. So, depending on organ uh, affected, so you can have esophagitis, then arthritis, endocarditis, so down the line. So, okay, varied the niya presentation, varied the niya niya and organs uh, affected. Okay? So, this is how your uh, candida uh, albicans look like on culture and then on microscopic examination. So, for the laboratory diagnosis, you can use the following uh, specimens. So, it is according to the site of vision, like using now exudates, vi uh, vaginal, oral swab, tissue, and um, nail scar, uh, scrub, then blood. So you can do microscopic examination using stained smears or wet mount using potassium hydroxide. Okay, so you can also do the following test, uh, germ tube test, then uh, culture in corn meal agar, wherein it will show production of chlamydospores, and do uh, um, also doing uh, resistance to 500 microgram of cyclohexamide. Uh, so when you get this test positive, these three tests positive, then you are sure enough that you are dealing here with candida albicans. If negative, then it could be other uh, types of yeast. Okay. So this is how the, the bioclinical test are uh, included in the in identifying your candida. So I mentioned earlier not on a, a germ tube test, then also chlamydospore formation using a specific agar. Then please take note that with regards to sugar fermentation, um Candida albicans is capable of uh, fermenting glucose and maltose. And then also another uh, biochemical reaction is inoculation of the yeast to the promogenic agar. Okay, for treatment, so you can have uh, either you are dealing here with a um, a localized infection or a systemic infection. So you can use uh, for as another for dealing here with localized infections. You can use especially involving the skin. You can have the top uh, topic uh, topical preparations, and then for systemic, you can use the IV uh, drugs antifungal agents, okay? Then another um, opportunistic mycosis is cryptococcosis. So please take note, uh, wrong spelling. There should be letter P. So it's spelled as cryptococcosis. May the uh, C-R-Y-P. Yan. So the causative agent is Cryptococcus neoformans. It is abundant in feces of pigeons. So kung hinot damot sarapati, be careful because this 
crypto focus neoformers is contained in the uh, faces of pigeons. So, with regards to morphology, this is described as spherical body cell with capsules. So, the source of infection is through inhalation of dust containing now the yeast cells. So, derigad ano to um, sayo, itong pag-alaga in mga sarapati, but make sure that the yaton era anton iburutangan nimo timo mga sarapati magimpyo okay so with regards to pathogenesis in the production of uh, the infection so it starts in the molecular level down to the uh, uh, organismal level so very ano to from the molecular level to cellular then um, tissue uh, level then to the organ uh, involvement. Okay, so with regards to the infection, these are the, some of the symptoms presented by our uh, by the patient. So the most common is having cough, but there are also patients that will present with weight loss, fever, uh, dyspnea. Sorry, this should be dyspnea, not dyspnea. Dyspnea, uh, thoracic pain, headache, and hemophysis, or uh, coughing out of blood. Okay, so for the laboratory diagnosis, these are the specimens that can be uh, used. We have the CSF, sputum, then lymph node aspiration, uh, biopsy, then blood, urine, and express prostatic uh, secretion. So this also involved the demonstration of encapsulated body round uh, yeast in a sterile body uh, using India preparation or histopathology. So the India ink technique is used to demonstrate the yeast capsule uh, produced by cryptococcus neoformans. You can also do culture and then detection of cryptococcal capsular antigen through serology, okay? So this is how your crypto uh, cryptococcus neoformans look like on, on uh, culture, okay? Here naman, a microscopic appearance of the cryptococcus neoformans, okay? Then you can also do serological tests for the identification. Okay. So for cryptococcus neoformans, it is negative with germ tube test, then urease positive for uh, three hours. Then you can also do biochemical tests using phenol oxidase enzyme test and urease test. Okay. For treatment, so in anoton uh, for meningitis, this involve uh, treatment phase and maintenance phase. So it requires about two weeks for amphotericin B, uh, or if you are, you know, uh, after uh, amphotericin B, you can uh, use now fluconazole for, you know, um, for about 10 weeks. And then to, uh, after 10 weeks, you can you, uh, continue the uh Fluconazole at a different dose for the maintenance phase of the treatment. Okay. 
So it also differ uh, in uh, the treatment also differ um, with regards to the immune status of the patient. So for immune uh, competent, meaning the immune system is, is still good. So you can use fluconazole and itraconazole for immuno def the deficient patients you can do ampotercin B or flocytosin. Part of the prevention is about, uh, avoid contact with birds. Next, we have aspergillosis. So, aspergillosis is an allergic pulmonary disorder caused by hypersensitivity reaction to aspergillus pyomigatus. So, it occurs as an asthma or uh, in asthma or cystic, uh, cystic fibrosis. So, this result in, in the immune response to our aspergillus colonization of airway and poor clearance of mucosecretions. So, this can be man manifested as bronchi uh, bronchiectasis, pulmonary fibrosis, and uh, compromise now the pulmonary function. So, these are the clinical forms of aspergillosis from the allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis to chronic one, allergic uh, uh, aspergillus sinusitis, then also aspergilloma, then we have the in invasive aspergillosis, cutaneous, then um, you can have also exacerbation of asthma and also exacerbation of COPD or chronic obstructive lung disease. So what are the risk factors for one to develop aspergillosis? So one is a weak uh, immune system. And then for those patients undergoing uh, organ transplantation and those having chemotherapy or malignancy. Okay. So these are the risk factors for the invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. So you can have a prolonged neutropenia. So there is an absolute decrease in the neutrophils. Then in cases of cost, uh, corticosteroid therapy, especially for those uh, post-transplant patients and those that uh, immunocompromised uh, uh, patients, then hematologic malignancy, uh, then those that received cytotoxic therapy and the age patients. Okay, so these are the signs and symptoms of aspergillosis. So it depends upon um, what organ, but basically it primarily affects the lungs. Pero there are also other uh, organs that are involved. Okay, for Laboratory diagnosis, you can do your microscopy using stain. And then, of course, you can do culture. So um, we have some species of aspergillus with the characteristic uh, color of the colonies. So for aspergillus fumigatus, it produces green colonies. For Niger, uh, it produces uh, black colonies. For Aspergillus flabus, it has yellow colonies. And Aspergillus ter uh, terius, so it uh, produces brown colonies. Okay, so I'm with here. So in the upper uh, part of the upper portion of the figures, uh, descri describe the uh, describe this describe the 
colonial morphology, whereas the lower group of uh, figures show to us the characteristic microscopic appearance of the organism. Okay. So for treatment, so uh, we have this, uh, uh, this table will also uh, tell us the, the different species of uh, Aspergillus and then um, the specific part of the pathway that is affected by the treatment and then the current drugs that are applicable for the, for the use of um, in the treatment of the infection. And uh, the last column will tell us the limitations of the said me uh, medications. Okay, that's it for the for the um, myco uh, mycology. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Any questions? Kunwaray, I will continue with the koana. The introductory part of the uh, virology.